All right, let's take this, uh, let's get on to the next steps here. Let's get some stock in here and some components. So what I like to do, there's a lot of different ways to do your stock in Fusion 360. You can let in the cam side of it, you can sort of like auto create it as part of your uh, machining setup. But what I prefer to do, I like to model my uh, stock. That's just what I prefer to do. And then I like to use it as part of my assembly. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to right click on the root level. I'm going to say new component. I'm going to call this stock. Um, we'll even just say op1, so I know that. Uh, it's going to nest it under this parent level right here. It's automatically selected, and it's going to activate it when I create it. So I'll say, OK. It created the stock component. It activated it with a little radio button by it. And uh, Romeo is just having a blast here. He is just he's loving He's loving this. There's like a magnetic beam between the computer and my eyes that he needs to uh, interfere with all the time. But we'll, we'll let him go. Uh, the stock is activated. And what we're going to do is draw a sketch and extrude it. I don't really want to look at all this other stuff right now. So I'm going to right click and say isolate. And now I only am dealing with what's inside of this component, which is Right now, the only thing that exists inside of this component is uh, an origin. So let's make a sketch. We'll right click on sketch. I'm going to make it on the XY plane. And I'm going to click this little icon right here to look at my sketch plane. I'm going to go to create rectangle. I'm going to use center rectangle. I'm going to snap to my origin. I'm going to draw a box, throw some dimensions. I think like maybe 0.75 by 2.5. I think that's good for the box. I'll say finish sketch. I'll say extrude. It automatically selected that sketch. I think I probably need 5 eighths of an inch. And it's going to create a new body. I'll say OK. And there we go. We have a piece of stock that lives in its own component. I'm going to make it 50% opaque so I can sort of see through it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to unisolate it. I'm going to reactivate the root level. And there we go. Now we have a piece of stock that we can use to make our part. Next thing we need, obviously, is a part. So I'm going to insert my connecting rod into the file as well. So I'm going to right click, insert into current design. And I'm just going to let it go wherever it wants to go. And I'm going to break this link. And by breaking the link, I have a completely self-contained, ah, OK, this is interesting. Some components have been moved. Capture the current position or continue in the previous position. I don't want to capture their position. I'm just going to say continue. And what you'll see when I do that is everything's going to kind of like suck back to where it started from. It, it put that raw piece of stock in the part, right? Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this capture position thing. Just don't be mistaken. Capturing position doesn't mean that something is assembled. You can capture the position, but if it's not assembled, it's still going to move around on your screen. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, but I have the connecting rod in here. And I broke the link, and uh, we can, you know, start putting things together. And, and remember, everything has its own coordinate system. So the root level has a coordinate system. This component here, the stock component, has its own coordinate system. And the connecting rod component has its own coordinate system. They are not assembled yet. That's why they're moving all over the place. I don't really need to see these coordinate system. So I'm just going to, they're called origins. I'm going to hide the origin group for both of those things. But I do need to get them assembled. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble my part into my stock. I'm going to click assemble, joint. I think I'll, I'll just snap to the center of that bore. And I'll snap to this face. and. 
Yeah. It's a place to start. What I think I want to do first is make sure I have a little material to face off. So I, I could try to just grab the handle and drag it down. Uh, it, it's, it's snapping in at increments that are bigger than what I care to use. Well, right there I got it down to 10 thou. But usually what I do is I just I drag it to kind of figure out the direction, whether it's positive or minus. Once I know that, I type in whatever I want it to be. Uh, that looks pretty good. The other thing I want to do is maybe slide it over into the middle of my stock a little bit. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just eyeball it. And that looks pretty good. I, 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 could, live, I could live with that. So I would say, okay, now I, I just created a joint. And what you'll see is um, my, my stock component and my part component, they are tied together now. Wherever I drag the, the stock, the part comes along for the ride. They are assembled. So the next step now is to get this stock into our vise. Now this vise that I brought in, if you if you uh, grab this, you can I'll put links to all of this in the description of the videos. This vise is parametric. I'll show you what that means in a second. Let me just let me just turn off some of these origins so the screen gets a little easier to see. This this vise is modeled in such a way where the the jaws open and close and the parallels can change size. So let's just work with that. If I go to modify change parameters, I get these parameters. I have parallel height, parallel thickness, jaw gap. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix the jaw gap. I'm going to make it 0.75 because that's how big my stock is. When I do that, the, the jaw moved, the moving jaw moved. Now I have three quarter of an inch gap. Um, the parallels. So the parallels right now are uh, three quarters of an inch high. And I don't think that's going to give me, it's not going to let much of my part project out of the device. So I don't know, let's, let's make it one inch. I'll raise it up a little bit. Let's, let's start with that and see what happens. So what I want to do now is assemble that stock into this. So same thing, I'm going to say assemble, joint, still doing a rigid type of joint. And what I'm going to do is basically I am going to assemble the bottom of that stock onto the top of the parallel. So the edge that I want, I want to pick this bottom face and I want that center point. Now, if I accidentally hover over here, right, you can see, see how the little, little joint origin thing is flipping all over the place. I want to make sure I'm locked into the bottom face. So once I, once I highlight over that face, I'm going to hold down control so it only will snap to things in that face. And I'm going to snap to that point. And now I'm going to come over to the parallel. And the same thing, I'm going to hover over that face of the parallel. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to snap right there. And it looks like my raw material came on over into position. So I'm, I'm going to just say, okay. And it looks pretty good. Well, almost. I don't have enough of my part proje projecting out of the vice job. So I won't be able to work with that. Now, because the software is parametric, um, I don't have to go break this joint, change things, and then rejoin it. All I have to do is come up here to modify, change parameters. And instead of having a one inch high parallel, I'm going to say 1.125. And do you see what happened? It automatically moved. All my joints and everything are still valid. And uh, you'll see it's assembled, it's fully constrained. Nothing is going to accidentally move across my screen. Um, so we're in a good spot. So for the sake of time, I think I'm going to stop this video right here. Just keep the videos a reasonable length of time. And, um, I'm, 
I'm also saving these files. So you'll notice every time I end a video, I click here and I'll, I'll just give it a, you know, video number two. You'll be able to see in the version history of these files, um, every time I press save, you'll be able to see it. Video one, video two. Um, so if you want to open up this file and sort of sync up with what I've done in each video, you can, you can view the version history that way.